Shalom and welcome back. We are now in the constellation Cancer. And Cancer has a very bad name. <laughs> and, and what's going on with the constellation? Is this a corruption or something? What's, I what's happening? I think so. We can't really even, as far as I know, we're not even really sure what the name should be. And I don't even know how this name Cancer would be related to a crab, which is what we have in the sky uh, currently. Is That's what we understand the picture is. But I know that... Um, the best we could do is look at the Egyptian had uh, a word that kind of transliterates into keep or even into the Hebrew that means kept. And I think that that is the idea. So and a, a crab actually is a good picture of this because a crab uh, will not let go once once oh, okay. you're once it puts a, it, it has something in its pincers, it will not let go it. You have to bang the head of the crab in order to get it to let go of it, get your fingers. You might even have to kill the crab. And that's interesting because you come from the Pacific Northwest. Right. <laughs> so you've got crabs. <laughs> we have crabs yeah. and we have crab. And, and, and truly this is even a little crab, it will grab on and you have to, you have to bang it against a rock in order to get it to let go. Wow. And it hurts, it just keeps squeezing tighter. So, yeah. uh, and, and, and the idea of being kept. So we're in this um, third chapter and this has always been conflict in all of the in the other two books. And I think that the theme of this one is that we are this is for the redeemed. They are now safe or kept from conflict at a level. Because we're in the millennial kingdom. This is the time of peace and safety. And so uh, we have for cancer just a beautiful idea that, that Christ is that person. He has kept us. And he says in John. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. Oh, okay. So much like <laughs> okay. he's got them, and there's no one can snatch him out. And inside um, the crab is, we, we'll see this, the star names have nothing to do with the crab. Uh, they have instead to do with the idea of a flock or a fold, uh, we have kids or lambs. We have this idea of holding. And then the, uh, the main star, Prea Sepi, means manger, or it could mean multitude of offspring. Mm -hmm. So we have this idea, I think, inside the crab is the, the ones who are kept. Uh, in Isaiah, it says, Behold, a king will reign in righteousness. And I, I read this a little bit. And princes will rule with justice. A man will be as a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry land. I think that man, a man, is a reference to the Messiah. He will be, for us, a hiding place from the wind and a cover from the tempest and rivers of water in a dry place. So we move on to another completely corrupted. <laughs> I do not know what this picture was supposed to be. Uh, and no, nor does anyone. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very common and well-understood one up in the, nor uh, the Northern Hemisphere as far as we all usually can find this constellation. But it is called Ursa Major, and it is a pair. There is Ursa Major, and then there's Ursa Minor, both bears. And there were no bears in Israel. There were no bears in Israel. No bears have tails like that, which the stars are even tracing out. So it, I don't know what it was, but it definitely, as we look at, there's a lot of star names preserved, okay. and they point to the idea of a flock again. So it's uh, so that's where we're going to go with this. This is the flock belonging to the Lord or to the Messiah. Do not fear, little flock, he says, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And I believe that that's this idea. This is the flock in the kingdom. And this is the greater sized flock. There's the smaller one with the, the smaller bear. So I have this huge list of star names. And uh, I'll leave this up for a little bit, but you can see that all of them talk about a flock or something about a flock that it's guarded. Flocks need guarding. You know, they need a husbandman. Uh, I love uh, Al-Khor is a tiny star that the Arabs, the Arabs would use to test your eyesight. You can only see it if you look at the star next to it for a long time, and then all of a sudden the little star will be visible to your eye, and, and it's known as the lamb. And then, and then we move on. I mean, then we have this other, this pair, this smaller flock, and the north star is in the tail. 
uh, the North Pole Star. And this one goes right around the, uh, the North Pole Star. And, and I, I just, Je- Jesus said this, And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. So I think this is this pair of flocks. And probably it goes along pretty well with what you've already been talking about with the remnants. Uh, it's, it has lesser <laughs> number of stars that we, can, we know about. But the um, Al-Rukaba, I believe, is the Arab name for what we call pol- the polar star. But it's the turned on or ridden on, and then waiting him who cometh, or in, in the calves of, or young. So again, we're getting these flocks. And Job talk, actually, this is God speaking. God is speaking to, to Job, and he's asking Job this question, can you bring out Mazareth in its season, which we have translated a lot of times constellations, the constellations in its season, or can you guide the great bear with its cubs? And I, when I looked at this, I believe that the Hebrew is really, is is so old that actually we lost the meaning. The Hebrews that are here for, the Hebrew words that are here translated great bear and its cubs, and it's the translators who have figured out that it's probably referring to these two constellations. And I don't know what the Hebrew is. I'm going to have to go back and, yeah, and look it up as soon as we finish. Yeah, it's, it's lost as far as I can understand. Uh-huh. So, uh, But I think they did a good job. I think that this is the reference because we see, we're, gonna, we're coming to the end and now we're seeing some of the beginning Again, because this is a circle. So Baute's, who was in the first chapter of the first book, we see him here very, very close to these two flocks, and he's a shepherd. And so when God asked Job, can you guide out the great bear and his cubs? There was, there is somebody who is their shepherd. It is the Lord Jesus Christ. So this is a deeper question than just looking at stars. I mean, God is always... Mysterious, right? And he has deep things to share. The final constellation, I love this one. I just love the idea of this one. It's a giant ship known as Argo, and it's sunken pretty far low in the sky. I cannot see it from my home. Uh, but it is, has the idea of the redeemed safe, safe in the harbor. It's seen as, as in the harbor, but it's filled with the redeemed from all around the earth, which God says he's going to draw people. He's going to put people from all over the place and bring them back home. Uh, Isaiah 51, So the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing, with everlasting joy on their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness. Sorrow and sighing shall flee away. The main star's canopus is a very bright star, and it means the possession and again, you see that, that, that we are staying consistent with the star names. It means returning from far, released to travel. So that's that idea that these are, these are people that God, and even in some of the prophecies, he talks about bringing people over the water or in ships that he's going to gather back together into his kingdom. Um, I mean, clearly, way back in the Torah, he starts talking about bringing his people back from the right. far country and from the right. north, south, east, and west. and. Of course, he's, he's doing that now in Israel, uh-huh. but uh, prophecy often has multiple fulfillment. And we see that, for example, when they escape from slavery in Egypt and then out of Babylon, they return from the slavery in Babylon back to the land. We see p- the parting of the Red Sea. We see the parting of the Jordan River or water mm-hmm. stop up to, to right. go. So there, there is multiple fulfillment. And I had mentioned before that uh, two of the annual festivals will still be practiced, observed, in the Millennial Kingdom. We say that in Ezekiel, and that's uh, Passover, Pesach, and uh, uh, um, no, Sukkot, and I'm trying to think, uh, Tabernacles, it's called right. in English, Tabernacles. So, so that's prophetic and pointing forward to mm-hmm. something future. And, of course, I'm very interested in that because I'm, I'm looking to see <laughs> what's forward beyond the Millennial Kingdom. So... I actually saw uh, some, some interesting things. Now, I'm starting with, with Cancer the Crab. The pictures of Cancer and two of the minor constellations have apparently been lost because they do not agree with the star names. Okay, so and you, you pointed that yeah. out. So there is this bright nebulous cluster that is referred to as a multitude or offspring. So I'm kind of keying off of that. In, in Cancer. 
In Cancer. Right. It's, it's, it's within Cancer. Mm -hmm. It's a cluster of stars right. within the, the uh, constellation of Cancer. So I'm kind of uh, uh, coming off of that. Now the Hebrew, again, they're giving me the Hebrew in these books in a transliteration. <laughs> I wish they had given it in the Hebrew. Um, and so all I can do is try to pronounce it and try to connect it with it, something that I, I know in Hebrew. So I say it akubeni, but, but actually there's b'nei. B'nei is, um, comes from ben is son, banim is plural, and when you put it together in a word pair, so you get b'nei Yisrael, you've got that a sound, b'nei, and then something has to follow. The sons of something has to follow. That's that word pair. And um, so I thought, well, you know, maybe that. And then the Arabic, meaning assembled uh, thousands. So the, these are the kind of clues. That's the best I could do to, to, <laughs> to, to get in and chase. But when I got in and chased, I found some really pretty, pretty neat things. So um, here we have um, in Genesis, um, and this is God talking to Abraham, Behold, my, my covenant is with you, and you will be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be called Avram, but your name shall be Avraham, for I will make you the father of a multitude of nations. So this is where we first get this concept of, of a great multitude. And I, I have put it in the Hebrew because I, I, for people who know Hebrew, I, th I think it's important. So <clears throat> we have um, va, let's see, vehayita le'av hamon. And hamon is our word for multitude. It's not used very often. It's, um, uh, but it, it does need, need a, mean, mean a multitude. Okay, so now, um, let's see. This is the expansion um, because, it, you know, the, the, the blessing is repeated to Isaac and repeated to, um, to Joseph. And this is an expansion. God said, your name is Jacob, Yaakov. You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So th this, again, is expanding on the concept. Thus he called him Israel. God also said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. So this is this concept of abundance. Uh, now, I want to draw your nation to a nation and a company of nations shall mm -hmm. come from you and kings shall come forth from you. So what's, what we're going to see here is this one nation and this company of nations. We're going to see that the company of nations, um, which is uh, kahal goyim. Uh, kahal is a, is a, we use it for church, it's a gathering. It's just in a gathering or assembly, mm -hmm. kahal goyim. And, and the goy are the, is most often used as those who are not Jews. They're, mm -hmm. they're the Gentiles. But it, in occasion, can be used for Jews. So we have to be careful here. So the kahal mm -hmm. goyim. And um, so from the remnant is going to come this multitude. That's what, and so this company of nations is coming from the remnant. And those who do not get the remnant, we're going to see it in scripture, are identified as, as producing one nation. Mm. Which is strange, because you'd think that um, the remnant is a smaller number, so they'd have a smaller offspring. And, mm. But that's not true. The remnant, the smaller number, is going to create this great multitude. Mm. And the others we see as having, as having just one nation. So now we get it again. Uh, talking to uh, Joseph, this is uh, Jacob um, talking to Joseph with a blessing. I will make you, Joseph, fruitful and numerous, and I will make you a company of peoples. And that's that same, that same concept. And Joseph, of course, is the, has the birthright. And from Joseph come Manasseh and Ephraim. Those are the, the two sons, and Ephraim's going to end up with the birthright. So what we get here with uh, those two is Manasseh, this is um, Jacob, remember he was blind and he crossed his mm -hmm. hands and he was supposed to give the blessing of the birthright mm -hmm. to Manasseh because he's the firstborn, but he gave it to Ephraim. Manasseh will become a people and he also will be great. However, so a people like a nation, okay, because mm -hmm. um, people is am, um, which, which refers to it, it, it's people. It's also used for nation. Mm -hmm. The same word is used for, we translate it as nation, a people equal a nation. And he also will be great. However, his younger brother, Ephraim, shall be greater than he, and his descendants shall become a kahal goyim, this, this multitude of nations again. So um, this, 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 now, I, I want to take a look at the concept of a nation because I, I think the nation are those who will not be in the remnant. And, you know, I'm looking for, you know, they're, but they're going to come to God, but I don't think they're going to come to God in, in, in the millennial kingdom. So, I, so I'm, I'm very curious about that. So uh, let me show you here. We have 
Uh, we have many, many nations, and I believe they will come from the righteous ones who inherit the birthright and will be a remnant. And the one nation are the other sons who are not worthy of the birthright, but, but still, God's going to make them great. I mean, they're his people, they're his children. He's, you know. So now look at uh, Yishmael, is the Hebrew Ishmael, um, was the firstborn son of uh, Abraham. He was the firstborn son. Uh, but he did not get the birthright. The birthright was given to Isaac. But he was clearly the firstborn son. And I, I've done this in, in my research and my teaching. And, and, and he was entitled to the birthright. And, and so, but we read here, as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Uh, behold, I will bless him. So, and he, we were talking about this, you know, mm -hmm. that he, Ishmael is going to be blessed. He's going to be blessed. And will make him fruitful. So he's going to bear bear seed, and will multiply him exceedingly, he shall become the father of twelve princes, and I will make him a great people, a nation, that's that word people, so there will be twelve princes, but they're also go all going to belong to one people. Now, um, you know, people tend to think, well, these are the Arabs, and maybe they are, I don't know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know, I'm a little nervous about drawing that conclusion, but I, I don't know, we'll see. So what is the role of the multitude of nations? So these are the, descend the multitude of descendants that are going to come from the remnant. Now, we read here, I will greatly bless you, Abraham, and I will greatly multiply your seed as the stars of the heavens and as the seen, uh, sand which is on the seashore, and your seed shall possess the gate of their enemies. There's the key. Okay, the gate was the... Uh, most vulnerable, vulnerable part of the walled, stone wall city was the gate. Mm -hmm. And possess is to go, that is that word we have that has that double meaning of, of take possession of and also inherit. So the, the, the abundant seed is going to finally defeat Satan. Mm -hmm. uh, they're the ones who are going to have that ability to, because they're going to be strong, they're going to be mighty, there's going to be a, a large number of them. Um, and then, uh, but we have, I'm not sure I showed this to you before. Through your people, O Israel, may be like the sand of the sea. Only a remnant within them will return. A destruction is determined, overflowing with righteousness. So, um, you know, many people think that um, the Jews are, are the sand on the sea, or the church is the sand, sand in the sea, the stars in the heaven. Well, yes, but there's multiple fulfillment, and there's much, much more abundance to come. And the remnant will be the one that will effect it. And I think we see this in Isaiah. Though your people, O Israel, may be like the sand of the sea, only a remnant within them will. Now, return is that word shuv that's also used for repent. Mm. Uh, yeah, repentance. <laughs> yeah. A destruction is determined over, overflowing with righteousness. And here's this thing where you get both the positive and the negative. Yeah. Very characteristic of the Hebrew. Now, I want to take a look at the word destruction, which is kilion. And I'm going to take you in and, and show you, because you see, when you want to understand a word, you don't depend on the English translation or the English definition. You have to find where the word, very often you want to find where it's used first, but you can track and see how it's used in the Hebrew. And that'll give you a sense of the meaning of the word, which is not often picked up in the English translation, because how, how can you convey it? Our English language <laughs> just can't convey it. So we get here in Isaiah, uh, let's see, no, not that one, let me read this one. Uh, this is in Deuteronomy. Among those nations, you shall find no rest, and there shall be no resting place for the sole of your foot. Now, the concept of rest is the end of time. Noah's name, Noah, comes from Naham, which means rest, and he was the first remnant, and, and all the evil was destroyed, leaving, leaving Noah. Uh, but, here's our but, we love our but, <laughs> but there the Lord will give you a, tr now, this is our concept of destruction. It's that failing of eyes. Mm -hmm. So it's going to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. But this particular passage it, it enlarges the concept. So those people who are not part of the remnant will have a trembling heart. They'll, they'll fear. You know, the remnant has no fear. No matter what happens, if the dragon is ready to eat you up, you're not afraid because you know that this is part of God's plan. And if you're going to be eaten up, you're going to be eaten up. That's okay because it's all part of God's plan. You trust him. You're going to do whatever he tells you to do. But those who do not have that confidence have a trembling heart. They have failing of eyes, which is our word, and despair of soul. So a destruction is determined 
and, and that's the first part of it. There should be a but in here. <laughs> mm -hmm. A destruction is determined, so those people who are not part of the remnant will have a trembling heart, failing of, failing of eyes is a, is a metaphor, you know, being able to see less and less and less and despair of, of, of soul. But the remnant will be overflowing with righteousness. <laughs> it's, it's pretty big. Mm -hmm. so, um, so now I want to take you in here. Um, now this is going to the future. This is the time after the Millennial Kingdom when Satan is loosed and he has a, a huge army. When the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison and will come out to deceive the nations. He, he operates by deceit, mm -hmm. deceive the nations. I've done a four-part series on mm -hmm. Satan's final battle plan, laying out from Scripture how, you know, exactly how Satan is operating. Takes four parts, so it's you know it's a two-hour. So there's a whole lot in scripture about it, but we really you have to dig to see it. Uh, to see the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together for the war. This is the final battle. Mm -hmm. There's a battle at the be that leads to the millennial kingdom, and there's one that follows the millennial kingdom. Um, together for the war. The number of the enemy is like the sand of the seashore. And this is so characteristic because Satan is the deceiver. So he's going to have an army like the sand on the seashore. And God's army is going to have come against them. And they're going to be like the sand on the seashore. There's going to be a great multitude. And the great multitude has somehow been created by the millennial kingdom. Mm. Um, we just, it's, it's dim. We, we can't yeah. see it all. We get these glimpses of it. Right, um, right. But, um, <laughs> so, um, so what I want to, well, I'm, I'm going to end, actually, with this. I'm going to bring you back to my, <laughs> my picture of the way I see things. Now, you may see things differently, and that's perfectly okay, because the Hebraic way of doing it is that you, you dialogue together. And, you know, and if, if somebody says, well, I don't see that, where do you see it in Scripture? I have to go to Scripture and show them where I see it. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll say, but, but I don't understand. You know, why are you doing this? And you have to take me to Scripture and show you where you're doing it. So Scripture is, our, is, our, right. is where we go. We have to show from Scripture. But this is just what I have seen from Scripture. So I see, you know, of course, the creation, the, the period of the patriarchs. Now, the, the land, the people of Israel were created at the time of Passover because, um, the, and that's when they became a people. Um, and, um, and God gave them the law so that they would know how to walk in righteousness. And, that's, uh, and, and, and those are the people of Israel. Now, the day of Pentecost is when the church is created. The, 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 and the, by church, I mean the, the believers in Yeshua, both Jew and Gentile believers in Yeshua. And, and I, we use the term church, so it's not right. a building, and it's not the, the right. church as we know it today. It's, it's an assembly. <laughs> it's an assembly. It's the people. Exactly. exactly. Ecclesia means assembly. You're right. Um, now we get the Great Tribulation, and I believe that Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur are prophetic of the beginning of the Great Tribulation. So Yom Kippur is the call to judgment, and then come the ten days of awe, because the judgment is coming, and you're looking inside mm -hmm. yourself about, right. you know, and, and uh, uh, the um, Orthodox Jews, and I think even conservative Jews, will seek forgiveness from people. They look back, mm -hmm. uh, you know, through their lives for the last year, and um, I had one actually sent to me once. I didn't quite know how to respond to it because she said, you know, this is what I've done, you know. And I thought, that wasn't so bad. And this is part of living. You're my friend. It's okay, you know. But she was asking for my forgiveness. I mean, of course, I, it, was, it came in an email, and I yeah. emailed it back. You know, of course. <laughs> of course. You're forgiven. I mean, but that's what she was doing. She was analyzing the past year because it's done on an mm -hmm. annual basis of, you know, what, how have I not walked in the ways of God? Mm -hmm. What kind of harm have I brought to people? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I need to seek forgiveness for that. So because the 10 days of awe is preparing for Yom Kippur, the day of judgment. And um, I believe that that is the God's, that's the refinement of fire. That's the baptism of fire. That's when God will select the remnant. Mm -hmm. and, and then come five days uh, well, you know, and on, on my, the way I see it, it's, it's the millennial kingdom. And, and what happens at the end of the millennial kingdom to bring all of God's people to him, I don't know. Um, and, uh, and then at the end of time, the great white throne judgment, 
um, the church tends to teach that um, all the Christians have been saved in the millennial kingdom, so the great white throne judgment is only to put people into hell. Um, I, I don't think so. I, I don't know, because it, it says all those whose names are not written in the book of life will go in, a, you know, will, will, will go into the lake of fire, will be right. destroyed. Um, and Sukkot, of course, represents the end of time. Um, so that's, and, and as I look through these constellations, I'm just, I'm seeing so much that, that lines up with this, especially the concept of the remnant, and I'm seeing nibbles, and the next, the next one is the last one, right? Right, <laughs> right, so we'll get through the whole thing, the yeah, victory chapter. And, yeah, yeah. I mean, all of this seems like victory, actually, in this yeah, book. Yeah, But Leo is the yeah. final. So I, I get nibbles. Yeah. I, I get little little glimpses <laughs> of, you know, I'm getting a good strong look at the millennial kingdom. Now, yeah. we've always asked, you know, who goes into the millennial kingdom? I'm, I'm getting a sense. That's my own personal uh -huh. perception. What is the purpose of the millennial kingdom? I'm just, I'm getting little glimpses of that because it's leading into what follows. And, mm -hmm. you know, whether God wants us to have a full understanding or not, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but that's my year coming where I'm going to work on it to, to lead to my last book, The Remnant in the oh, End of Time. It's great that it's a help. It's been a huge help, and it's kind of launching me and, yeah. and, and giving me confidence that I actually can find things <laughs> in Scripture. I think that it, for uh, maybe the rest of us who haven't spent so much time studying the end, this is a good way to introduce it because we are not taught that much about the Millennial Kingdom right. generally as believers, but um, you're getting a chance to kind of look at it and see that it's something right. maybe exciting that you would like to look forward and I to. And I want to end with one thought. The purpose of God allowing us to see the future is so that we will stand today. Yeah. That's, the, that's the most important thought that and right. with that, we'll have to leave you, but we're coming back for our last session next time. Shalom. Bible Interact, uncovering the mysteries of the kingdom of God. At BibleInteract.tv, you will penetrate the scriptures of the Bible. At our store, you're just one click away from owning your favorite books, DVDs, or study guides. Earn a degree from our university and watch hundreds of video presentations from biblical scholars, archaeologists, and theologians. By subscribing to Bible Interact, you'll find all the resources you'll need. So why not subscribe today? Go to www.bibleinteract.tv. You'll be glad you did. Interested in studying more about the temple, the Messiah, or what God's plan is for our future? No problem. We've got you covered. With more than 200 DVDs, books, and workbooks, you'll find the answers you've been searching for. Bible Interact, uncovering the mysteries of the kingdom of God.